Hi everyone, I just did this video and realized that it was sideways and rather than having everyone crick their head at 90 degrees, I thought I would just re-record it. So my apologies if you already watched that one. I want to do something a little different today with uh, Master Copy Idea, Michelangelo's Creation of Adam. And we're on Procreate and just a uh, couple quick thoughts here. One is Michelangelo's uh, S, but more likely, um, if we think about the S curves he uses as uh, a main idea and a secondary idea. The main idea and the secondary idea. If you notice the proportion of those things, there's a major line and a minor line. It's hard to tell, but this is going to the end of his hand. <clears throat> Um, so there's a major idea going down to his knee, and then that switches. And the S-curve is one form of dynamism. You might think of it also as a circle. And he also uses the square, which is right back here in the arm, which becomes kind of the foundation launch pad for his reaching out and up. And we need this kind of stability to really give a good balanced foundation for the dynamism here. So that's kind of conceptually what he's thinking. Uh, this first line that I did is a Barg drawing way of thinking. Uh, if you're not familiar with Barg drawing, leave a comment. I'd like to know if people want to cover that. I assume that most people know about it. Inside here, we have the internal gesture line. Basically, that goes from the the notch in the clavicle through the sternum, that should be a straight line because the rib cage is rigid. And then after that, it starts to flex because this is the uh, squishy part of our body. And that's where a lot of the um, twist comes from. If you notice how compressed it is on that inside where he's flexing and all that energy is compressing in there. And then notice how soft and gentle it is on the outside. And that's pretty typical with contrapposto of any kind. This is reclining contrapposto as opposed to standing, right? Same idea though. There's a compression that he really, really squeezes here, more so than if he was standing. I also want you to notice these other interconnected lines. If you look at the final painting and you can draw the biggest lines possible through there, <clears throat> you'll start to see the orchestration that Michelangelo does that gives everything a sense of unity and he can twist and morph his figures around, but we still feel like, yeah, that's a single coherent unit. There's a main idea here and then there's this kind of secondary idea. And this main idea is, again, kind of related to this bookend that creates this ability to thrust his arm up and out in a dynamic way. <clears throat> um, if we toggle that off, we can start over. Um, the anatomy parts, you can also think about... Um, uh, well, basically just, uh, that's kind of a socket, a ball and socket here. Similarly down here, and then similarly over here. You can see actually in some of Michelangelo's drawings, he'll call out, he'll have these little lines sometimes, um, kind of notating for himself, okay, that's a certain anatomical landmark. I'm not going to get into that too much right now, but just keeping this constellation of points in mind. There's <clears throat> uh, not enough time to talk about that right now. But if you think about these bony points as being moments of change, the joints. So he creates this kind of thrust. And where is that moment going to change? It's going to happen at one of these joints. So just thinking anatomically, this point of change happens in the elbow, and then the next point of change, if we could see it, if it wasn't cut off, would be the wrist. 
And then the next point of change is actually his finger, his thumb coming down. So those are some of the things that I think about. Uh, if you have any topic ideas that you want me to cover in any of these videos, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.